Hello, um, thanks for bearing with me there. I was just trying to get uh, everything started because it took me longer than I thought to uh, get this whole thing set up. As you can see, it's quite a, um, a busy little game um, in terms of lots of things to fit on the screen. And apparently I thought it would be um, clever for me to take up a third of the screen with chat and stuff. So yeah, I'm probably gonna have to change that at some point, but thanks for joining. Um, first of all, I did wanna say, very important note, given everything that's going on in the world right now, it is a bit strange for me to um, be doing a stream, which is just board games. Um, but having spoken to people, um, I think it is kind of important that, um, you know, work doesn't stop. Um, this is kind of my only productive thing that I do, um, given that I'm not actually working right now. And I would be amiss to uh, stop um, doing this completely but I did take a break for the last week and a half um, streams were cancelled streams were postponed um, I'm very much a supporter of the Black Lives Matter um, movement um, I am trying my best to do things that sort of help it um, <laughs> yes Paul it is gonna get um, it's gonna get bigger I thought you were talking about the movement which is also probably true um, but yes the game is also gonna get a lot bigger so it's gonna um, take up more space on the screen. Um, first of all, if anyone is listening, can you check my sound levels? Um, because I can, I know there's going to be background sounds that you can hear, um, but obviously I want to make sure that for this stream, my microphone is picking up my voice clearly without having to turn the volume up too much. Um, cause it picks up background sounds quite a lot. Yes. But, um, just to reiterate, I'm very much a supporter of the, um, this, the I'm doing flip flip flops making quite a lot of sound. Um, uh, yeah, so basically I am a supporter of the movement. I am trying my best to support it in any way I can. You know, I'm not the person who is leading the conversation as I kind of mentioned in the, in the tweets, but yes, I, I'm trying my best to support it. So on that basis, it's maybe not going to be much, but any money that I make or generate through the streaming in the next, um, in the next sort of like few weeks, I will be donating all of that, um, to, to uh, charities that are supporting that that movement so yes that's that's ultimately some of what i can do to help and i hope it does um but in the meantime you know people still love board games people people can still i believe support the movement donate um uh, do everything they can um towards that but also can take time for themselves and um you know watch people playing board games as well and hopefully this will kind of do a little bit of both so yes um Okay, so this game, Adventure Games, uh, this is a narrative sort of discovery adventure board game. The game is, it, the name's in the game, uh, the hint is in the name itself. Uh, I am basically just muting my phone so I don't get any uh, accidental texts during it. Uh, yes, yeah, so ultimately um, this game is called Monochrome Inc. It's one of two, actually technically one of three games that the uh, Cosmos games have uh, revealed at the moment. Um, I will, uh, as on as um, I said I would, oop, crap, that's not what I wanted to check. I didn't want to check that. I wanted to check the rule book because I want to make sure I get the name of the designer. Uh, the, the authors of this game, technically, because it is a narrative game, but obviously it's been designed as well, are Phil Walker-Harding and Matthew Dunstan. Um, they designed this game. Um, so and, and Cosmos Games distributed it. Uh, so if you you know, do want to get this game. I'm only going to be playing the first chapter here. There's three chapters in total and there are other games in the, in the series as well. So it would be um, really good if you like the game to go and buy a copy yourself if you want to see how the story ends and hopefully I won't do too badly. Um, okay, so the game works. Um, I'm still trying to get my head around exactly how the game works, but ultimately you are playing um, characters. Uh, there are four sort of agents, I believe, or adventurers, they're called, um, and their names are Ramon Chiu, uh, Alva and John and I'm going to pick two of these because the solo game says I can pick two adventures and I play them both so um, if you have any uh, suggestions <laughs> spoilers the butler did it uh, I'm pretty sure that's not the case Paul um, but yeah uh, yeah so basically um, the game you play two, two adventures and you're trying to solve it the mystery I'm going to read the introduction in a second but ultimately uh, you're going to move around this sort of um, the space uh, this right now resembles sort of an elevator. So you see this car card here is the elevator and basically it's going to go up and down on this sort of track 
next to these floors, which are part of Monochrome Inc. Um, we're going to read the introduction and find out exactly what it is we're trying to do and what we're trying to solve. Um, along the way, um, we will gain new clues, maybe new items, which we can combine. And then you've also got um, new levels, which can be explored. But for the first thing, the only places we can go are the lobby, which is where we are right now, the offices, the control room, the OR, which could be operating room, not sure yet. Um, but ultimately, um, still not played one of these games, keep meaning to. Yes, uh, same. I, 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 what, as soon as these games were announced, I was like, yes, I want to see something a bit like Exit in the terms of problem solving, but I want it to be more narrative, like more story-based and mystery-based. And this is exactly what it is. So since it was announced, I've really wanted to um, play it. Obviously, I never got around to it. Finally picked up a copy, um, I think, at Aircon. Aircon and uh, just never got around to actually playing it since until now. And I thought, what a great game to play solo, if you want, because it does support that. And also a game that has like something like of a mystery to solve, which is really cool. Um, this is more like a point and click PC adventure game. Yes. So the way the game works, and I'm glad Paul is here. I'll try and explain the game as best I can uh, because Paul is is here. Um, you'll see on the on the chart on the sheets here, there are locations in the place which have numbers associated with it. Um, you will play the characters and when it ultimately, when you um, want to, so the, essentially each of these little boxes that you can see here, some of them have numbers in, but there are um, there is a big box at the bottom here which has um, nothing in it because that's like the kind of holding place for people when they're not in any of the other locations. Um, each of the cards has a number and that's like a different location that you can go to. Um, you can also go into the elevator as a location itself and um, the game kind of kind of remembers a level. So this right now is the, the same level. Um, you can go up and down to different levels and the elevator is considered the same level as where it's next to, um, depending on where the elevator is. So ultimately, um, you are going to get items. Um, you are going to move around. So essentially a turn works. Uh, so you're gonna move around, collect items, combine items together. So you're combining two items together or you can combine items um, with locations on the board. So for example, if I go here, I could then use um, a card that I have an item to look to combine with that. Um, oh, if you aren't using the app, I strongly recommend it. Don't use the book. You will accidentally see, see stuff that you shouldn't. That is a great idea. I wish I had seen that uh, earlier on, but I will download the app because that was another thing that I meant to do. But in the chaos of this week, obviously I forgot to. So if you'll bear with me, I will, I will definitely download that. Um, but yeah, ultimately you are going to um, you're going to be going around, collecting items, trying to solve the mysteries. Um, the way, the turn of overview on here is hopefully going to help me because this is there's a lot of words in here and it's not always 100% clear. It's not bad. It's not bad rule book. Um, so what I've seen, but yeah, it's ultimately a lot um, a lot of stuff. So ultimately on your turn, what you'll do is you first of all, um, once we've picked the characters. By the way, guys, if you um, Cosmos Helper app is free, okay, Cosmos Helper. Yes, I will download that now. Um, Cosmos Helper. So we'll use that app. Uh, yeah, so basically you're going to have a character. If you want to, by the way, tell me which characters I should pick by just saying red, green, blue or yellow or the names. We've got Ramon, who's the burglar, uh, Chu, who's the con artist, Alva's the hacker and John is the bootlegger. Now, Paul has played this before. He might be better at telling me which characters I should pick. Um, but if you are just watching and you just say the colours, we'll go with the first, the first two colours that are picked. So maybe one each and uh, I'll just pick those characters. They each begin the game with a different item. So yeah, you're gonna play these characters. Um, you are going to then, uh, able. you're able to then exchange uh, cards, which these cards are called adventure cards. And these are sort of like the items that you'll collect. You're allowed to exchange adventure cards with players on the same level as you, okay? Um, meaning that sometimes a character needs two specific items. You need to get them um, together. Uh, then the next thing you'll do is you'll move characters with the elevator uh, move character figures with the elevator or on the same level. Bearing in mind the uh, elevator counts as the same level. So you are allowed to move characters um, uh, basically up and down. Uh, then you will, if you move to a level for the first time, then you will reveal that le a level and read its entry, which is going to be handy for this. Um, blue and yellow, they're the ones I didn't use. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make that much difference. Okay. Okay, so let's use blue and yellow then. So say hello to John and Alva, which means you can get rid of red and green. And these are basically, they're little stands, but obviously I'll just put them like this so it's kind of clear um, where these characters are. Or maybe I will just do this 
and put them on the spots that I need so it's very obvious that these characters are here but you can also see if they've gone to certain locations so I think that's probably the best way to do it uh, let me just let me just <laughs> do the terms and conditions on here you're not going to be able to see this but I hopefully um, it will still be useful let's just leave that load okay so yeah after then you've gone to a location you can do one action you can either explore a location which is the individual spots on the board so you can go to a location and read its entry um, you can combine adventure cards which i said is about doing that i'm not entirely sure how that works but hopefully the game will will be very helpful in that regard uh, the app will be helpful um, or you can combine an adventure card with a location meaning like sometimes you will need to put a card in your hand to a location to be able to progress something in the game then um it does say how to combine uh, which is kind of funny uh download the content okay i have to download stuff and then uh, exchange adventure cards again so it means you're allowed to uh you're allowed to combine things twice on the same turn uh maybe that's good for if you've solved something or got something and then you can just pass that on to another uh, character okay so uh the adventure book i think that's what i want yes so there we go press enter or zero for the introduction okay let's just press enter okay can you hear something done urgently Can you hear that? discreetly illegally business has been slow recently though and it's been a while since your last job or you may be under surveillance and the organization has blacklisted you a sound brings you back to reality on the floor in front of your door is a misshapen package it's unmarked and there's neither an address nor a sender on it there's no point in taking a look through the peephole either the package was surely delivered by drone Burning with curiosity, you tear the package open. Inside are several pairs of those fancy new AR data glasses, along with a brief message. Put these on. You curiously do as you're told. A building appears before your eyes, and you hear a man's voice speak. Hello, and thank you for your attention. I am Ovin. This is Monochrome Inc. You're probably already familiar with the company. In the past few years, it's grown to become one of the top three pharmaceutical enterprises in the world. Rumor has it they've now developed a groundbreaking new product, a miracle cure called Rainbow. It's said to improve concentration and physical performance, as well as to greatly accelerate tissue repair, supposedly without any kind of side effects. Everything is still very hush-hush at the moment. Monochrome is currently conducting extensive tests on Rainbow in the remote research facility you can see here. Have we got your attention now? Good. Because we want you to find out more about Rainbow. We've managed to obtain basic staff passes to get you into the building. We need you to gain access to the restricted levels, find out more about the synthesizing process, and, if possible, get your hands on the formula. It's probably stored in a well-secured lab. Just three more things. First, with all our best interests in mind, make sure you don't leave any trace of your presence behind. Nothing that can be associated with us or connected back to us. Second... You can use the data glasses inside the building to communicate with one another and to see and hear what others are seeing and hearing. Third, you're not the first ones we've hired for this job. We lost contact with the previous team a while ago. So be on your guard. As the final sentences are uttered, the pictures of a man and a woman fade in. Then the glasses turn clear again and you look around at each other. Rainbow, the effects seem greatly exaggerated. But your client, Ovin, is convinced it's extremely valuable. So, why not? A few days later, you find yourselves on the ground floor of Monochrome Inc.'s remote research facility. It's after midnight. You catch a glimpse of a white cat just before it vanishes behind some furnishings. Hopefully no one else has already detected your presence. The stolen staff passes have gotten you this far. Now you're on your own. Read the entry for level A in the adventure book. Additionally, take adventure card M1. This is your mission. Cool. Okay, so we are some uh, we are part of some sort of agency, uh, street gang. Um, we have been tasked to find out more about this rainbow thing, which seems to uh, improve your concentration and kind of heal you up when you get injured. So it's very strangely. Um, don't know if use frog with this. <laughs> what is that from? Is that from a specific game? Because I've not actually seen that. Um, that specific thing or knowing you you could just be making that up um but either way it's quite funny uh, okay so we are we have given we've been given um our mission so this is our mission your client wants you to find out more about rainbow gain access to the restricted levels you should also gather information about the manufacturing process and steal the formula okay so that's what we're trying to do so hopefully you can see that on the side there um we are going to go north direct north 
up uh, on the elevator. So that would be uh, kind of what you mean, but no. Okay, so uh, now we need to read entry A because we have actually gone to the location A in here, which is awesome. Um, the other thing is, uh, yeah, just read A. And we need also a piece of paper. Don't worry, that's not a fire alarm. That is just, um, <laughs> just something uh, to say that the oven in the background is working. All right, so I've got a bit of paper here. Actually, do you know what? Let me get a bit of better bit of paper. And let's take some notes. We will probably need to take some notes in this game. So let's just keep that. Um, Okie doke. Okay, so uh, first thing we'll do is now we're going to go to entry A. Now, I think if I just do this. The smart lobby is deserted. At its center are two elevators. One travels to the lower levels, 106. The other to the upper levels, 102. Between them, stairs lead up to a painting, 101. Two richly ornamented bronze statues of lions flank the stairs, 105. You take a quick look around and see the entrance to the cafeteria, 107. A large screen, 103. And several items lying on the floor, 104. There's also an open elevator waiting for you on the left, F1. Oh, apparently on the left. That's over here, apparently. Let's switch it up. Got to make this make sense. Uh, take lots of note, Paul says. That is true. Now, there is an alarm system here, um, as you can see, and it's denoted by this sort of like moving card. Um, if it gets to level five, we have probably caused too much noise and something's going to happen. And it tells us to read a certain entry. So we'll do our best to try and avoid that. But for now, we've just entered, as you can see, um, into here. Uh, the other thing I've got to make a note about, which I didn't actually explain in detail, is when you move on certain locations, um, some characters have... Oh, well, before we do that, let's take the cards that our ca characters start with. So, 51 for um, for Alva here, and 52 for John. So, let's just pop those over and see what the character is. So, Alva is going to start with the Handicap Facial Recognition. Exploring a symbol... Uh, location with the symbol this raises the alarm level by one okay so she has basically been naughty i'm guessing and uh, she is going to have trouble if she ever goes to locations with that symbol there so let's just put that at the top there so we can remind ourselves john however probably has a similar handicap malware exploring a location with the symbol these loads of codes and stuff raises the alarm level by one so we'll do that as well so we'll leave that there as well so basically i'm going to try and avoid using any location unless i absolutely have to where alva um, will go here so alva's probably not going to want to go to 101 which in this said uh, was uh, a painting so she's yeah so maybe there's a facial recognition on the painting keep covering it and uh, meanwhile john is not going to want to go over and explore this screen over here because he is probably bad at remembering passwords and he just like fumbles and so he's going to cause problem there so if that ever happens i'm going to raise the alarm level by one um so basically that includes if you go there to like combine it with a location so what to do what to do we want to find out more about something now i did mention something about a cat i want to know what these things are on the floor nobody's going to have any problems and um, first of all nobody's got any items so that's fine so we're going to ignore the first turn so we're going to ignore exchanging adventure cards um well, having said that, oh no, that's just going to say, imagine that was an actual card that you could uh, exchange. But this symbol on the top right means you cannot exchange that card. So that kind of moots that. Uh, so yeah, you have to stick with those. Okay, so um, we're going to go and just take a look at, let's have a look. So there's two bronze lions. Don't see any reason for that. The cafeteria is over there. Um, again, no reason to look for that. 102 was uh, upper levels. Um, again, that could just be somewhere behind. Do I want to check that? Probably not. Um, I think that I'm going to go and have a look at the things on the floor. Now, the other thing I wanted to look at, there's the, I think it's the cafeteria, is 107. So it's over there. 102 is for the upper levels. 106, it says, was the um, lower levels. So maybe I'll use the other character to go down and check one of those. But for now, uh, first character is going to be this one, and he's going to go over and have a look at 104. So... 104, I'm going to pop in here, 104, and... Someone has carelessly just left some items lying around. Take adventure cards 10 and 11. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. It is much more fun, um, I'm sure, than doing any sort of work. Uh, so we're going to look at t cards 10 and 11. So John has gone to look at these. So John's going to get these cards, and I feel like I might have to shift over this. This isn't so important, actually, anymore. Um, what I might do 
uh, yeah, I might just create a little bit more space over here so we can see them. Some saccades. Okay, so John's basically got a rope ladder. Ooh, that's cool. And a grappling hook. So who has left these lying around? Hmm. Now, uh, <laughs> so we now we've explored a location in Reddit Sentry. So there's nothing else we can do. Or technically, we could try to combine those. Um, there is a special section for about combining items, which I'll read now, so I'm sure. Uh, to combine one adventure card with another, you'll need to combine the numbers. Take a th look at the numbers. On the adventure cards, the two-digit number is shown in the top left corner. Um, locations are marked with a three-digit loca location number. The smaller of the two number comes first, followed by the large number. Then they yield a new four or five-digit number. Then you look up that entry in the adventure book and read it aloud. Okay, so if I wanted to combine this with something else, then I would put the smaller number and then the large number, and that would be the code I put into the uh, uh, to the app, and that would basically mean I can find out whether I've done something right. Okay, so that was his first turn. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a time limit in the game. I guess I just have to avoid this. So I guess the score depends on how, how long I've done, but ultimately I'm not really doing this for the score because... Um, I don't really want, I just want to get through it and find out some more information. So, yeah, okay. So let's move um, the next character. Again, I don't think there's any reason to give uh, that character anything of them. So I'm going to go and have a look, just just for sheer curiosity, because we're all going to the same location. Let's go down to the lower levels, which is 106. And I should be taking notes here, but there's nothing really I think I need to write. So 106, let's have a look. You press the button to call the elevator leading down to the basement and wait impatiently. When nothing happens, you take a closer look at the button panel and spot a little keyhole below the call button. You won't be getting anywhere without the key. Okay, so we unfortunately have no key. Uh, so 106, I'm going to write, need a key. That's probably the kind of notes I should be taking. Okay, so that's that. Um, it's back to um, What's-His-Face's turn. Uh, right, where else can he go? He could have a look over at this place, and it might be the same situation because there is a similar panel I see there. Um, but you know what? Let's have a look. Oh, actually, maybe he can have a look at the painting because he's not going to suffer any um, negative penalty for that. So let's just leave. Let's leave that. I think if I just put them there. So 101. Let's have a look. The marble staircase leads up to a brightly illuminated painting. Below, there is the name Lord Elmsley. Could you hear that? Because I've just popped it on the... And if you can hear it just from leaving on the table, that seems like quite okay. And I might just leave that rather than holding it up. Um, okay, so 101, the guy's name is Lord Elmsley. Now, I should probably um, remind, remember what he looks like. You can't really see him that much. Um, it's just a shadowy figure. But he's just gone up and that's his name. Okay, yep, that's good. Brilliant, so that's perfect. Okay, so uh, the next step I'm going to do is Alva... He's going to have a wander over here. Now, she is the hacker, so it does make sense, actually. I should have thought this earlier on, but it does make sense that she would be able to do something about this. So she's going to go over to um, 103 and have a look at this screen with the, the digits on. There's something there, and I think she can probably solve that. So let's have a look. 103. As if hypnotized, you approach the big screen showing wafts of mist. Above it is a little recess. It's too high up for you to reach, though. Okay, so that's too high up for us to reach, which does make sense. Now, is there any reason to potentially, I mean, you could potentially combine these. Um, I'm not saying it's the best, but I'm just worried that in my head, like, logically, it would make sense that you could combine a grappling hook onto something that is made of rope. But it's probably not the case. Now, I wonder if by doing that and it's wrong, would it, um, would it... Uh, impact me would it raise the alarm level um you can combine two adventure cards when you are located anywhere but in the elevator and i wonder then if i could grappling hook up to it maybe i'm just being a, i actually do you know what thinking about it uh, i'd lose the plastic bases and just move the cardboard characters around yeah fair enough i think let's try that out so she's over here and he's over here yes yeah that's that makes more sense doesn't it yeah so you can get a better sense of whether they are. Okay, so yeah, um, too high up. So I'm not going to do that because it doesn't seem like the right move. I mean, it could be, but I'm not entirely sure. So we're just going to leave it for now. Um, I think what's going to happen now is this guy is going to go over and have a look at the, um, the, the cafeteria because there's no harm in checking around. In the cafeteria, you 
find an empty can of rush and a candy bar. They're probably left over from an employee's health snack. There's also a water dispenser. Well, at least you won't die of thirst here. Take adventure cards 13 and 14. This is probably the adventure, the, the rush, which is the energy drink. Ooh, we've got some fingerprints on that and a chocolate bar. Okay, so this guy's really loaded up with items here. Now, the fingerprints makes me think that, I mean, that is a clue. That does seem to be a clue. I'm even going to just leave that aside there so you can see that. Um, but it doesn't really help me at all. I don't know what to do with that inf information. Maybe if there's a way to combine it with something else. Can you get me a coronation chicken sandwich? Uh, yeah, can uh, John, would you mind just going and getting, um, picking up a coronation sandwich? Uh, <laughs> It doesn't say there's nobody there. It just says that you just uh, that there's leftover from um, an employee's health snack. It says so. He's gone there, um, and maybe she's going to go over and just have a look at these um, these lions because again, there's no harm in checking, and it's not going to impact her to try that. So let's try that. One o five. The bronze lion sits on its pedestal in a menacing pose and intimidates all those who enter his territory. On a board beside it, you read, Monochrome Inc. was established in 1993 by Lord Elmsley. Today, it is one of the world's leading pharmaceutical manufacturers with subsidiaries in 63 countries. In 2027, it introduced the miracle cure Rainbow onto the market. Well, someone sure is feeling optimistic. The drug hasn't even been released into the market yet. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it hasn't been released yet, this drug, this Rainbow. Um, interestingly, also, I didn't realize until then that's, um, that we're set in the future. So um, unless it is literally set in 2020 and they're saying that it's going to be released in seven years, I don't know. Um, in 1993, it was started. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe this game is set somewhere in the future. Anyway, that was quite interesting to learn that that's the founder. It does make sense. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Okay, so it's John's turn again. Um, does he look in here just because he can? And then do we then go in the elevator and explore further levels? Okay, let's do that then. Let's go and have a look at 102 and see what's in the upper levels, if we can get there. A sign beside the elevator indicates that it travels to the floors with restricted access. You press the button to call the elevator, but nothing happens. A message flashes on the screen. Insert security ID. Okay, so can't go in there without ID. So just writing a note here needs security ID. Okay. So there we go. That's us covered this whole area. Um, so I think that we're okay to now go up in the elevator. So it's uh, it's Alva's turn. She's going to go into here. Um, now, in terms of this, maybe you can help me. But maybe the uh, can I just can I can I move the elevator before I I take my movement action? Um, because I want to make sure that if I may just wait for them to both be in the level, uh, you can move freely around Monochrome Inc. But you must use the elevators to reach different levels. A level um, elevator takes you only to the levels depicted on its card. At the beginning of the game, you can only use elevator F1. Uh, if the elevator is not already on your level, you call it by placing the elevator card next to your level and move in the same movement phase. Place your character figure. Oh, so I can. Okay. So I can I can move Alva up here to explore and explore location, read the entry, and then I can do the same thing with the character next turn as well. The rules in the elevator are a bit vague. Well, just based on what I read there, it does seem to be that um, that you can move it. Uh, if you have to use more than one elevator to reach a desired level, you can move your character figure to the next elevator in order to use it. If it's not already there, you may call this one to enter it and move to the level of your choice. Hmm. If you are in the elevator at the beginning of the turn, it takes you directly to the new level. Yeah, actually, you can call an ele elevator to your level and move in the same movement phase. That seems to imply that I can. Yeah, you can now use it. As okay, so I'll just do that. So she's going to go up to... Um, level B, which is the offices. Um, she's the hacker. I believe that makes sense um, that she can go in there, but we'll see. All right, so B, uh, when I go to a new location, um, I'm going to reveal it. Ooh. Uh, reveal level card and read its entry. Okay, so let's read the entry. You reach a spacious floor with high ceilings that looks like some kind of workshop or assembly facility. Right in front of you, a computer, 201 and several files, 205, sit on a large yeah. desk. At the center of the room is a strange piece of equipment, 206. Behind it, you spot a stack of cloth sacks, 202, and a yeah. huge sign, 203, hangs from the ceiling. 
Five meters up, below the ventilation shafts, is a little maintenance platform. 204. Mm. Okay. So, now I can go to um, a location and read its entry. Now, do I want to go to the computer, which I think is probably her forte. I think that makes sense. Let's do that. Okay, so she's going to go over to the computer, 201, and we're going to read entry 201. You sit down at the computer and eye the keyboard. Take Adventure Card 90 and read it out loud. If it's no longer in the game, then oh. read entry 234. Ooh. Okay, so I get to read this one out loud. Take Adventure Card 90 and read it out loud. All right. So I'm going to read this one. Password query. Please enter a password. If you're Chu, Raman, Alva, or John, read the specific entry. Well, I'm Alva, so I'm going to read entry 445. Now, I think I can do this. 445, is that right? <gasps> so hopefully. So Alva, hopefully I've picked the right character to do this. I can finally put my skills to the test. Let's Very skip. few people know that it's actually possible to get it. Just going to answer. Um, hello, uh, Sergeant von Divon. Uh, the game is called Adventure Games. I'm going to just show you the box. Adventure Games Discover the Story. Um, this one is one of two that are available at the moment, but there's a third one in development. Um, it's called Monochrome Inc. Um, it's by Phil Walker-Harding and Matthew Dunstan. Um, so if you are interested in the game, this is a, a storytelling game. It's in three parts, uh, three chapters. I'm just playing through the first one at the moment. Um, you play characters, you go around, you basically collect items, um, trying to solve the mystery. Currently, the mystery is um, there's a drug called Rainbow. Uh, you are trying to find out more about it because this tech company, Monochrome Inc., has said that they have invented a drug that uh, greatly improves concentration and can heal up wounds. Um, and you're like, this is very suspicious. You're sort of like you're a part of a gang and you've been told by somebody who's given you some mysterious sort of like message to go and investigate and find out whether Rainbow and what it is, find out what it is. Um, so yeah, this um, this basically is very interesting that it has a voice element. Yes. So basically the game is is by Cosmos. They have an app called Cosmos Helper. I'm just going to show you um, the, my phone. So I'm using this and it comes with a sort of narrative element to it. So it's really cool. Um, I only I did know about this, but I didn't download it before the stream started. So that was quite funny. Um, thankfully, Paul Grogan of Gaming Rules Vids is is watching um, and he pointed this out for me. So yes, very cool narrative. So you don't have to do any of the reading. If you're not the kind of person who likes reading out loud to people, then this kind of replaces that. So that's actually really cool. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just, uh, I'm very early in the game. Um, so if you wanted to stick around and watch it, I'm just going to go through it. I've never played it before. Um, if you then did decide you liked it, you could then still play the game um, for the remaining chapters and discover the sort of the ending yourself. But yeah, for now, um, I've just taken my hacker character, explored the offices and trying to hack into this computer. And it looks like uh, we're going to do this. So that's what we are hearing right now. So let's continue listening. Into the system while it's booting. I can't access the operating system though, which means that it'll take forever to trawl through the data. But at least I'm in. It looks like the servers are running under an increased load. A massive hacker attack appears Ooh. to be underway on the research facility at this very moment. Wow, the internal security systems are managing to withstand the attack. Thanks. A fair amount of computing capacity must be available here. Most of the firewalls at the civilian facilities I've recently visited virtually would already have been cracked by now. Ah, what do we have here? Two active malwares. The first one probably slipped past the firewall under the cover of the attack on the firewall. It's already spread throughout the computer network. It seems to have passively infiltrated the surveillance system. Mm. Monochrome Inc. probably introduced the other malware itself as a little surprise for unauthorized visitors. It's activated when someone attempts to gain access without a correct password. The malware then duplicates itself on all nearby external devices not registered in the system and reports their real-time location to the surveillance system. Nice. I'm gonna wipe you out, you little monster. <laughs> right, done. Now I just need the password. Return adventure cards 16 and 90 to the box. If you'd like to try guessing the password, read entry 800. Okay, so there was a lot of information there, but first I'm just going to follow um, the, the, the instructions. So it says re return cards 16 and 90 to the box. And I think 90 was the one I was just reading. Um, yeah, so these cards are now going back to the box and I wouldn't even look at them. Um, so that's changed up the game already. Um, so hopefully I just made a good decision. Now, um, ultimately, what it, I was trying to digest what exactly what happened there. Um, but she got into the system. So Alva made it into the system. 
um, she can't access the operating system uh, because there are there's an attack happening on the system at the moment um, but it's withstanding it so the system is like it knows there's an attack but it's withstanding it um, so it's quite a powerful a powerful um, computer um, uh, it says most of the firewalls at the civilian facilities um, would have already been cracked by now so that's kind of how she knows its thing but she says two active malwares and the first one was probably slipped under past the file under the cover of the attack on it so while it was attacking something else sneaked in and uh, seems to have passively infiltrated the surveillance system um, monochrome probably introduced the other malware as a little surprised for people who are trying to attack it um, it basically activated when someone attempts to gain access without a correct password then duplicates itself on all nearby external devices and reports there are so basically it could catch you so luckily luckily we sent the right person on the job and I managed to avoid that but having said that knowing that um, I am going to not try and guess the password because I have literally absolutely no idea what it could be or what it is so uh, that's the end of Alva's turn um, I might need to write that on this system here so what did we go to 201 201 I'm just writing some notes um, hacked in but need password um, I don't know if that's enough information, but I think I'll be able to remember that stuff about hacking. Okay, so now John's turn. He's not going to call the elevator. He's going to go and have a little wander up here as well. And he's going to come in and check it out as well. Now, what's he most interested in? He's just arrived. He's like, okay, what's that sign all about? Looks like something to do with the rainbow. Um, what he cannot check is where the computer is, but that's fine. What he might do is, because it's the only location that that uh, Alva can't check is go to 204 because as you can see if she, if she went there the the symbols match and as the result she would also lose um, she would increase the alarm system he's going to go over and have a look over here so 204 let's have a listen scaling the maintenance platform you climb up just below the gray green ventilation shaft a constant flow of air blows over your skin drawing the air upward the ventilators probably take the air up to the floors above after a few meters, the shafts disappear into the ceiling. Okay, so there's obviously aircon aircon on. Um, there's 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 a there's a suction of air into those. Um, so it's possible we could use that if we had some sort of gas um, that we needed to spread upwards. Um, but it doesn't look like of anything of use right now. Um, so I'm going to put that it sort of like takes the air uh, up to higher floors so let's see if that will come in use uh, use later on by the way thank you for the follow i know you just um you just did it while that narrative thing was going on so thank you very much for that okay so now let's take alva's turn again she's she's just hacked into the computer she's seen him checking up there i think she's most curious about um the files because she's right next to them uh so she's going to just go over there and have a look at the files. so let's have a look 205 i think let me just double check yep 205 you quickly scan the documents and find the secretary's agenda Flipping to a random date, you begin reading. Friday. Man, is he annoying. <laughs> if I have to get just one more can of that darned rush for him, I'll flip out. No one else here drinks that disgusting stuff. And now he wants me to serve him a fresh can in the cafeteria every day. What the hell's he thinking? I'm a secretary, not a waiter. The usual issues with the boss. Maybe the most recent entries will be more enlightening. Take Adventure Card 22, then continue reading here. That might be something. As you tear out the last page, a little piece of notepaper falls out. On it is the word password. Mm. As your initial elation about your discovery subsides, you realize that it's encrypted. Take Adventure Card 23. Okay, so that's interesting. I, I'm sure I'm not the only one to have picked up on that. But obviously the boss, so she's the secretary, but the boss only drinks the rush can. So we can presume that those fingerprints on that can belong to the boss because he's the only one that drinks it. So that's quite cool. Along the way, then, we also learned that um, she's got a, a new entry in the thing. So let's read this out. Uh, well, I mean, I could just put it in, but let's do this. Monday. Phew, that was a tough weekend. I'm so relieved that the research director will be out all day today. I'll be able to have a bit of a quieter day. So research director would be the boss. So that might... It's quite interesting. Um, that said, my inbox is absolutely overflowing. Maybe the boys from the long-term study have a new rainbow sample. I could really use a sip today. 
It does wonders for my concentration. Allegedly, they've solved the addiction problem too. Mm, interesting. Uh, Wednesday. It's strange. I haven't seen Betty from accounting for days now. Maybe she's off sick after the stressful weekend. Um, okay, so that's one thing we learned. Uh, the next thing we got was a password. Uh, the lion surveys his lord's holdings. How many does he see? If you know the number, add this to the number on this adventure card, then combine the sum with the location. Now, this makes me think, this makes me think that I am probably, yes, there's two lions. The lion surveys his lord's holdings. How many does he see? I don't know. I mean, you could argue that the simplest solution would be to add the location to um, the number of lions. But if the lion is surveying his lord's holdings, like, what's the holdings? The holdings don't appear to be the lions. It could be a really simple puzzle, and it's like, yes, that would be it. But that seems, like, too simple. So I'm not sure about that. Uh, anyway, that's what she's got. So we do have enough potential information now to to crack. We have enough. We have a hint about what the password is, at least. But I don't know if that's it. So I think the lion surveys his lord's holdings. The lion is looking at his lord's holdings. But what are the holdings? doesn't really make sense at least to me so we'll carry on all right so john having climbed up there he's like ah there's nothing useful there now so he's going to go over and have a look at this uh, complicated machinery in the middle because that is very weird to him so um i'm just going to write down a note so we've learned that it's the, the research director from that and then we've also got the memo addiction about um about the potential addiction of the issue so let's go and have a look at this machine you've never seen a homes one close up before Holmes one. this outrageously expensive fingerprint scanner can scan Ooh. absolutely anything <gasps> good old sherlock would turn green with envy and best of all it can also create artificial fingerprints if need be if you'd like to scan your fingerprints read entry 850 Ooh, now that's interesting because it's a fingerprint scanner now we know that this is his the research director's fingerprints um i don't think i want to check my fingerprints because that would just be terrible i feel like uh, i gotta go i need to prep for my through the ages stream see you later thanks so much paul genuinely hope the stream goes well thanks for tuning in uh, you are very helpful um hopefully see you on the next one but yeah take care um okay so i'm going to assume that uh not scanning my fingerprints is the best decision but i would like to try and combine because he does have the item i want to try and combine this item with this so I think if I put the code in 13206, I can scan this and maybe confirm. This is going to be quite interesting because I don't know if this is going to, if this is going to be correct. But we'll try it. 13206. You put the empty can in the yes. scanner. Okay. A blue light then comes on and the machine's arms begin circling around it. After a few seconds, the machine stops <gasps> and the light turns green. Sample replicated. Then an artificial fingerprint drops out of a glass flap at the bottom of the machine. Return Adventure Card 13 to the box and take Adventure Card 21. Okay, so I made the right call there, if you like. It makes me feel a bit happy. So ultimately what I've just done is I've scanned the fingerprint. Um, it's then replicated it. So yeah, that's probably the best I didn't put my fingerprint in there. So we'll return Card 13 to the box because that's served its use, I guess. And now we take Card 21, um, which is an artificial fingerprint. Now this is good because if we need to access anything with a fingerprint scanner... Um, which I don't think there's anything we've uncovered right now. Um, however, it looks like 202 will be potentially that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to... Um, Alva's going to basically have a look at the sign up here. So 203, and she's going to have a look at that and see what the sign says. Maybe it's something, maybe it's something interesting. On the sign, you read the first slogans for the new miracle cure. Rainbow, the product of the millennium. Rainbow cures everything, it claims. A dose a day for the rest of your life. If this ad is anything to go by, then Ovin isn't exaggerating. But who believes advertising anyway? The market launch does appear to be imminent, though. Looking up, you also spot a small object that one of the staff appears to have left on the sign. If only you could reach it. Well, that would be um, to try and get this guy over there to have a look and combine the rope ladder and the grappling hook. Although having said that, what I can do right now um, is I can exchange adventure cards 
So my turn is currently Alva. I might use this chance to exchange the rope ladder and the grappling hook um, because it doesn't look like the rope ladder is useful on its own. It's too flimsy, um, but I could then combine those items. Uh, so at the end of this turn, I can exchange adventure cards, handing them back over to 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 basically get get um to basically get no actually he's got them yeah so that's fine I've just literally just had a look at this so I can exchange adventure cards um you know what I'm just I'm talking nonsense gotta go as well kids need food good luck thank you so much um thanks for tuning in I really appreciate it and yeah um hopefully I'll well I'll upload this on YouTube and you can always watch it back if you are curious about how the first chapter turns out but yeah thanks for watching and uh, have a good day. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is at the end of my turn, I can exchange adventure cards again. Um, I will, I mean, it's his turn next, so he's obviously going to go over and have a look. And I think I can have multiple characters on the same location. Um, move character figure. Level, locations are marked with unique numbers. Does it say you can do multiple characters? Uh, if your character figure is positioned in a location, you need to either move your character figure to another location. Um... There can be more than one character in the same location. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's do that then. So he's going to basically, that's the end of his turn, but but basically he's going to come over. He's, he's Alva's basically said, hey, John, um, have you got uh, anything I can help to get up there? And he's like, yes, I can. So what he's going to do is he's going to go over here and he's going to then combine these two objects together. So he's going to take 10 and 11. I think the smaller one first, I believe. Again, I want to make sure this is correct. So combining items, combining two cards together, um, I think is it just the case of you receive adventure. Can and must combine these with other specific adventure cards. Uh, to combine one adventure card with another, you need to combine the numbers. Take a look at the numbers. On the adventure cards, the two-digit number, the smaller of the numbers comes first. Okay, so I'm going to do 10 and 11 and see if that comes up with anything. You attach the hook. Nice. That should allow you to reach previously inaccessible places. Return adventure cards 10 and 11 to the box and take nice. adventure card 12. Okay, so we've combined that together. So John has gone over, he's combined items. He cannot unfortunately go anything else again, but he will give this rope hook ladder to Alva. And Alva's turn now is going to use the hook ladder on the sign to try and get that. So that's 12, 203 because you add the small number and then there we go and let's see what happens from up here you can finally reach the item take adventure card 19 okay so we are now getting access to that small item which is a lighter okay so we've alva's just basically got a lighter now what notes that she didn't say to return the hook, hook ladder so she can still hold on to that and that will hopefully be useful um for them later okay so john's just uh, Alva's had a look up there. John is now going to do the last exploration over here, and he's going to look over at this uh, pile of cloths over here. So 202, and let's see what we find out. The cloth sacks are filled with dirty laundry, including a uniform from a security company. That might come in useful as a disguise to stop any curious looks. Mm. You also find a length of used plastic tubing. Take adventure cards 17 and 18. Okay, so we've gone and we've had a look. We've found a uniform as well as some plastic tubing. So uh, he has collected those, so those would be for him. Okay, nice. So now we've got a nice number of items, um, but what to do next? So I think we've explored... Um, I can't think of anything. Now, if we were to try and get the password, but I think that we can still do a little bit more exploring first. So that's what we're going to do. So John has just found those. Alva is going to basically take the, the elevator and she is going to go up to level C and find out what's happening in here. Oops. Well, that's quite fortunate because the only location that she can go is 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 in here. So this is interesting. However, we might we might not have You enter a small Let's room see. that's dominated by a wall of monitors at the other end. One doesn't seem to be working. A statue stands in front of the monitors. Directly next to it, there is a laptop. The low hum of servers can be heard from the cabinets on the room's walls. To your right is an armchair, and on the back wall is a safe. A slight movement makes you freeze. That's not a statue. 
It's a security guard in uniform, 303. She stands virtually motionless, watching the monitors. She doesn't seem to have seen you yet, though. Now, I think that what we can do is we can bring this guy. We can, well, we're going to go, we're going to go into here and we're going to get this guy to um, give Alva the security uniform and she is going to go and have a look over here and try and deal with this. So for that, I'm going to leave it. She's going to, He's going to come up here into the elevator, and I believe that's allowed. Hopefully that's allowed. Um, can more than one person? All of the team members on the elevator will, with you will be moved together, but they cannot. They stay on the elevator and cannot get off it during your turn. Don't forget the elevator is regarded as part of the level it's located next to you. So yeah, what's going to happen is he's going to call the elevator. He's basically going to give her the security uniform, and she... I think, um, if I can combine it with the location, I don't think it's part of location C. I think it is going to have to be the location um, on that, that card there. Um, combine cards with a location. Um, it says uh, you have to be at the specific location. Do not forget about the alarm, okay? Um, complete until next turn. Um, I think it's fine. I don't think you can combine things on the l actual level. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to combine. So she's going to move back up here. And she is going to basically combine this. So 18303. And let's see what happens. 18303. And hopefully this is good. You enter the room dressed in the security uniform. Kay. If you're alone in the room with the security guard, read entry 760. If you're in the room with your team... Read entry 860. Note, if the elevator is next to level C and someone else is in there with you, you also have to read entry 860. I think I may have made a mistake here by him going up here because he is in the elevator. Um, but even though I didn't think that would count. and I, So I think I'm going to get a punishment here. But we will find out. So entry 860. Let's see what happens. But I, either way, I'm still dressed as something. So we'll see what happens. You enter the room dressed in the security uniform while the others attempt to hide. The security guard turns around and a look of relief initially passes over her face as she sees you. But then her gaze falls on your team and instantly hardens. What are you doing bringing these people in here? And who are you anyway? I wasn't told someone new was starting. I'm going to report this immediately. In a few purposeful steps, she reaches to the back of the room and disappears through a narrow door that has suddenly opened. You try to stop her, but the door is already closed. You've no idea where it leads. You're unable to locate an opening mechanism, despite a lengthy search. Scowling, you take off the dirty uniform. This will surely have consequences. Damn it. <laughs> Raise the alarm level by three. Return Adventure Card 18 and Level C to the box. Replace level C with level N from the level stack. Turn over level N and return all character figures to their previous positions. Then continue reading here. With the guard gone, you can finally take a look around without being disturbed. Read entry N. My goodness. So that was bad. And all for the fact that this guy I thought could hide in the elevator, but apparently not. So we did not get to go and explore that. That would have been so sweet. Um... Annoyingly, that, that's that's really frustrated me, that has. <laughs> okay, not to worry. Um, we, we, we have been punished with the alarm level raising three. But as long as we're careful from now on, we are able to progress. So it does say that we um, carry on. We've replaced that. We've got rid of the security guard uniform. And now we will um, reveal N. So now we're just going to give us a bit more information about this level. There is a wall of monitors at the far end of the room. 313. One of them doesn't seem to be working. On the desk, there is a laptop, 315. The low hum of servers can be heard from the cabinets on the room's walls, 311. To your right are an armchair and ottoman, 314. And behind them, there is a safe in the wall, 316. In the back of the room, you spot a small painting, 312. Interesting. Okay. So that was her turn. She's done that. Now it's he's going to come in and have a look. Now he's the only one that can go and have a look at these things. So that will be his focus. 
I think the first thing that he wants to look at, and again, I'm worried about time here because she is obviously going to do, um, maybe I'm restricted at time, but maybe not. Uh, let's go and have a look at 311. What's the servers about? 311. The cabinets are full of row upon row of humming servers. Little cables link the high performance deep learning module with the cooling system. You spot interesting labels on two of the servers fingerprint database and backup security surveillance. Hmm. So there's two things there of interest. Um, fingerprint database, which we could use, maybe not. You spot interesting labels on two of the servers. Well, that doesn't really help, actually. Maybe the computers, but deep learning database. Uh, sorry, deep deep learning. No, wait. The deep learning. Uh, did you say something about deep learning? I'm sure she did. Never mind. Uh, so a fingerprint database, servers. Uh, oh, deep learning module, yeah. <laughs> so fingerprint uh, database and uh, backup security surveillance. Backup, security, surveillance. All right. Okay. So uh, we're going to now take Alva, and she's going to have a look at the the screen at the back because I think she's the one that can do that. So let's have a look. Three one three. She's going to have a look at this. Three one three. The outside of the building is shown on the screens. <laughs> the access road, various car parks, entrance, and emergency exits. There are some glitches though, and the monitor for the lobby appears to either be mm. defective or the transmission has failed. Next to the painting, there's an indicator for the energy consumption. It's currently at 75%. Mm. There are sometimes glitches though, and the monitor for the lobby appears to be defective or the transmission has failed. Next to the image, there's an indicator for the energy consumption. 75%. What could that be? Energy consumption. Is that... Uh, that's a little... Uh, indicator next to the painting. Now, does she mean this painting? But that wasn't even part of the thing. Anyway, okay. Uh, he is now going to have a look at the safe because he can. Um, he can without raising the alarm level. So let's do three, one, six. You walk over to the safe and run your eyes over the keypad. Take adventure card ninety one and read it aloud. If it's no longer in the game, then read entry three four eight. Okay, so he has got this. Uh, okay, so if you're Chew, right, we've got the bootlegger. It doesn't really feel like a burglar would probably be best for this. But yeah, um, if you're Chew, Ramon, Alvaro, or John, I am John, so I'm going to read entry 566. What a relic. This really is from the last millennium. Someone here appreciates fine workmanship. Apart from a quick oil top up from time to time, it doesn't require any maintenance or need any of the updates that often cause more problems than they solve. And above all, it works entirely reliably, even during power outages. What more could you ask for? And if you were to have enough time, you could just go through all the combinations. Right, let's get started. You hesitate with your fingers over the buttons. What if it's just a replica and it's actually connected internally to the security system, electronically or digitally? Models like that do exist. While they're of no interest to collectors, they certainly make our lives difficult. You take a final look around and spot a post-it note. Ah, well, would you look at that? Return Adventure Card 91 to the box and take Adventure Card 27. If you want to now try entering a code, read entry XX316, with XX being a number between 01 and 99. If there is no entry, increase the alarm level by one. There's no entry. If you want to now try entering a code with read entry XX316, if there is no entry, increase the alarm. Oh, so I have to. Well, the last time, if you have to write the new code down, then at least get rid of your reminder in the pool when you're done with it. Hmm. Damn it. So if we don't put an entry in, we're going to increase the alarm level. Oh, no. If we do try to... If we do try to put one in and there's nothing for it, then we increase the alarm level. So that would just be like a shot in the dark right now. Um, is there anything that we've got uh, that could act as if it's... If you have to write the new code down, at least get rid of your reminder in the pool when you're done with it. Reminder in the pool. 
is there a pool like hmm, i don't think we should try writing stuff down but um i'm gonna write down needs a code now it's interesting he said um about having a replica because if you remember we are in a very modern technology company so it does make sense that it have a bit more security than something that's old-fashioned so i do kind of see what he's doing there anyway that's the only person we could have gone to look at that anyway so it doesn't seem like we made a huge mistake there um however i think she is going to have a look at the computer now because she is a hacker so she should be good at this 315 let's put that in and see what we're dealing with there the laptop might belong to an engineer. The screen is locked, but there's a printout of the ventilation plan laid out below it. There's still a USB flash drive plugged into the laptop, too. <laughs> Take adventure cards 24 and 25. Oh, okay. So this is interesting. We have, I mean, there's not a lot of space on here. I think I might have to move some of these over because they are less, less useful um, for visual it's very much more important i feel like to see the um see the the cards that we're holding so let's just do this bear with me okay so i think now we can see enough of these all right so basically alva has just found i might just leave a little bit more space for these so basically alva's just found these so it's a, a flash drive which i wonder if we can use that on that computer is that something we can do to use the flash drive on the computer what does it say the laptop my, the screen is locked but there's a printout okay so there's it's locked so we can't use that computer however we were able to use 201 right no if we can get in but we need a password for that which we still don't have and it's not worth risking trying to enter that password now especially when we still got another level to explore please let the publisher know i just ordered exit the haunted roller coaster from amazon based on this stream my son and wife like escape rooms so i hope they enjoy that oh my god that's so nice thank you so much scoop 2906 that's really kind um you're not uh you, you you've not made the wrong decision there um the exit games are amazing i'm such a huge fan of them um they they are like puzzle solving games um they have a mix of um different themes um they do really clever puzzles and um they've so many of them and they're so cheap as well um so and honestly thank you so much for that comment that's actually made my day um yeah uh I, and that's when I haven't played actually the Haunted Roller Coaster. I think I've played like 10 of them, but that's not one of the ones I've played. So yeah, if you like that one and you enjoy it, man, you've got a lot of games that you can go through as well. So thank you so much. Um, if you're not following and you fancy giving me a follow, that'd be awesome. But obviously no no pressure. If you like, you can just enjoy watching this stream. <laughs> oh, and also I should say that, yes, this is a very good, interesting game. A little bit different in the sense that this one's more about combining things. As um, Paul earlier said, it's more like a point and click adventure game. Um, but the exit games are more like puzzle solving um, in that you need to be able to like work out puzzles rather than like make logical deductions. Although there's a little bit of that in them as well. So they are very they're both different but very amazing styles of games so that's that's awesome thank you <laughs> okay uh let's crack on with the mission so i um went to 315 and found out that it's a locked so locked um locked computer so that's probably useful for me to know so i don't make the mistake of going there again um however do i want to oh so i another thing that's worth mentioning is um i don't have anything to use it for yet but b with the with the ventilation the actual ventilation goes up to d so whatever we find out here will actually impact um what we can do with um location 204 because it can potentially impact that so being very careful um what i might do now um who's most likely to to be able to survive given that that one was bad for him i feel like sending him up right now to go up the next level it's going to be less bad for him to go up on his own and i don't know what or in i think it's operation operating room but i don't know what an operating room in terms of like surgery would be in a actually it does make sense because they have this as medical applications so let's send john up here while she can just continue um exploring the, the ottoman whatever so he's going to go up into the onto the um elevator i don't think he needs anything from her so he's just going to go up here and have a look so let's have a look at level d Ooh. That's good because he he can explore everything in there and she doesn't have to worry about it because she would be impacted by that. Uh, oh, you can't quite see that, so I'm just going to spring it down a little bit. Um, you can kind of see it now. Okay, awesome. So yeah, he's going to look and he's going to. Oh, we have to read the entry first. So let's see what uh, let's see what this place is all about. 
As the elevator travels up, you continue to ponder whether OR really could stand for operating room. So. Your hunch is confirmed when the elevator doors slide open. At the center of the room, an older man in a surgeon's gown, 402, is examining an operating table, 401. Your arrival doesn't seem to concern him. He's far too busy methodically cleaning up after a recent surgery, Ooh. even at this late hour. Close to you is a trolley on which various instruments have been laid out, 403. Slightly off to the left, a few pieces of equipment are stored, 404. And you spot a door across from you, 405. Oh, nope, that's the one. That's the door. Okay, so he doesn't really care about us being here. But I want to go and explore. What do I want to check? Maybe speak to the guy. Older man. Yeah, maybe I don't, maybe do I want to speak to him? I don't think I do, but he doesn't really... He's not really bothered. I feel like just speaking to him might be the right call, right? He, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I think... Yeah, let's just, let's just have a look. What was 401? 401 was um, the operating table. Maybe I'll just have a look at that. Maybe I'll just have a look at that and see what that's happening. Happening on that operating table. For a medical room only intended to take care of employees' minor injuries, there really is a lot of blood on the operating table. <gasps> and little fleshy remains. Oh. Just the sight of this makes your stomach turn. Well, that's grim. <laughs> that's very grim. Um, that didn't howl me or anything. Uh, I feel like now she's going to have a look at this. She's going to have a look at the ottoman. Not that I can't imagine there's anything interesting about this, but I am a finickety... I want to check everything I can, especially when I'm not penalised for doing that. You sink down onto the armchair for a quick breather and stroke your hand along the leather cushions. <laughs> Hold on a minute. You feel something hard. <gasps> you begin to feel a little queasy when you discover a human tooth <gasps> in the molar. Ooh. You swallow hard, but keep searching. After all, we're meant to find out what's going on here. It doesn't take you long to gather a dozen or so human teeth. Oh. Who on earth do they belong to and who hid them here? Take adventure card 32. Bloody hell. What's all these teeth doing in the in the sofa? We'll find out. <laughs> Let's have a look. God, 13 teeth. My goodness, what a disgusting discovery. Okay, well that's clearly something wrong with that. Um, okay, so he's going to have a look at this door over here. He's going to have a look at this door over here because he's clearly not been bothered by um, checking that. So, yeah, let's see. You look from the surgeon to the door. Then your eyes Ooh. narrow. Take adventure card 92. Is it there? I feel like I took out, like, a card that said 90-something. But it's there. So we have got that. Okay. 92. Operating room door. Oh, if I'm... If I'm John, read entry 622. That doesn't seem very good for me. But let's try it. 622. Probably shouldn't have tried to go through the door. But, oh well. 622, yeah? John? 60, oh, no, that's... He's, he's, he's him. Right. I'll have to go right past the dock to reach the door. He seems a little creepy. The equipment in the room here is far more interesting. Not only is it state-of-the-art gear of the highest quality, some of it's also been modified. And if there's equipment this amazing in here, then I can't wait to see what's next door. Right, mm. let's go then. Hey, Doc, my boss told me to check the equipment next door. Are you busy there, or can I go now and do that? That surprised him. He finally stopped playing around with... Oh, gross. What on earth was he just working on? The blood drains from your face as you take a closer look at the table, and also spot the blood and fleshy remains on his gloves. A slight frown appears on his face as he sees you. Perhaps your boss should have sent a colleague with a stronger stomach. The room next door certainly isn't for the faint-hearted. Mr... What's your name again? You feel the bile rising up in your throat, and you just manage to make it out of the room before you throw up. Return adventure card 92 to the box. Okay, so there's some kind of creepy stuff going on. Maybe they're experimenting with people? I don't know. Um, but I'm not going to get to find that out, annoyingly. But to be fair, that's the only way I could have gone in there, so I'm not too, feeling too bothered by that. I think it's time for Alva to come up and use her hacker charm, charisma... <laughs> Um, for uh, checking on this guy over here, 402. She's going to come up. She's going to speak to him. Oh, no. Oh, I almost made a mistake. Hang on. How do I go back? Uh, okay. Wait, let me try this again. Oh, yeah. There we go. 402. 
402. So she's going to have a little chat to him. Scrutinise the surgeon. He's a bit older, with thick, horn-rimmed glasses and a shock of short, thick, white hair. It's difficult to say whether he's exhausted from a long day's work or the previous surgery. The security ID pinned to his chest catches your eye. It bears the name of Professor Dr. Frisk. He's currently entirely engrossed in packing and labelling the surgical remains into little tubes and plastic bags and cleaning up the blood. Dr. Fisk doing something completely gross, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Let's have a look. All right, so yeah, basically that's pretty grim. But, oh, hang on, do I realise the sort of extreme has slightly slipped? Apologies for that. Let's just do that and make sure that we're getting the best possible quality for you guys. Yeah, that's that's slightly better. And that's why it was moving. So there we go. I'll just move that slightly up again so you can see that. And also, I should probably bring the alarm up a little bit so you can see how badly I am causing trouble over here. Um, okay, so Dr. Fisk doing something uh, gross, but we don't know what. So John is going to go, well, I'll leave him to that. And he's going to go over and have a look at this because he's like, no way in hell am I going to have a look at more bloody things, but I want to know what these things are over here, because they look interesting. So he's going to look at 404. Several canisters of compressed gas lean against the wall. They're labelled anaesthetic gas. Hmm. Judging by its weight, one of them is full. Take Adventure Car 29. I'm really liking the idea that he's just like, oh, some anaesthetic gas. Let's just, um, let's just, let's just carry one. And I've figured out actually what I need to do. Um, this anaesthetic gas would be perfect for putting into the vental system over here and hopefully knocking him out. But I'm going to make sure, obviously, the, the, uh, the, 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 this other character has gone before that happens. So what's going to happen now is sh he's going to say, hey, um, I'm going to, I'm going to actually, I think he's gonna, just going to stay there for now. And they're both going to go to, actually, he's just going to go in there. No, he can't move yet. He's had a look at the location. She's going to have a look over here. Because she's like, ah, before we go, let's just have a look and see what these uh, tools are doing over here. Because you, John, do not have the best stomach for it. So. Vaguely disgusted, you examine the trolley on which several surgical instruments have been laid out. Most of them are covered in blood and other remains. But there's also an unused scalpel Ooh. underneath them. Take adventure card 28. Certainly will. Not that she needs more... Uh, stuff but she has got lots so she's got quite a lot of stuff at the moment um okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to get them both to go down into here um he is not going to do anything uh too dramatic over here i think he's just gonna can i just not do anything i think i, I think i have to do something but that seems a bit silly if i have to do something um you do not have to you, if you're not on the elevator and you do not have a contradicting adventure card, you must do one of the following actions. Hmm. I must do something. Interesting. Um, is there anything that I worth combining somewhere? Um, I don't have a key. Maybe I can try entering a password, but I don't want to. Um, what does the what does the memo and the the password say? The line surveys his hold, Lord's Holdings. How many does he see? If you know how many, I think. He only sees one though, right? That's the kind of puzzle I imagine, because the lion would look at his holdings. But how many does he see? The holdings is a is a strange one. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. What's gonna happen instead? Because I've got the hook ladder now, right? So she at the end of her turn, she's gonna give him the hook. Oh no, but he needs he needs it. Darn it. In that case, oh man, this is tough. Because what I'm trying to think of at the moment is that still needs to be accessed. Um, so maybe instead of her looking at that, no, I've already said that he can. So he's going to come and have a look at here, and I guess he can just explore a location again. It doesn't. Ha it doesn't say you have to explore a new new location. Yeah. So he's just going to come. <laughs> he's just going to come down here again, and he's just going to look at. Uh, actually, he needs to do the, the gas thing. Hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. She's going to get. She's going to give him the hook ladder. No. No. She, he, he needs to do this. Yeah, so she's going to give him the, the gas. And then he basically goes down and basically just explores the thing again, which we know he can do. And she, by the way, 
um, is going, oh actually he could have given her the, the hook, no she's got the hook ladder, yeah, so she's going to basically come down, all the way down here, and she's going to go to this place here, and she's going to try and reach up here with the hook ladder, but I don't think that's going to work, but we'll try it anyway, and we'll see what happens if you do, do make a mistake. It doesn't say if there's no entry, if there's no entry, do you have to explore the, um, if you have to explore and there's nothing there, you have made, continue to the next phase. Yeah, that's fine. I can just explore it and try it. So we're going to try and use the hook ladder, so 12 on 103. So 1, 2, 103. As if hypnotized, you approach the big <gasps> screen yes. on which an actor yeah. smiles at you invitingly. Above it, a little recess. You swing the hook on your ladder and hook it over the pink ceiling pipe. Now you can reach the recess. If you want to take a look inside, read entry 180. Definitely want to take a look inside there. Um, because we've 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 looked in. So what does it say? You approach the big screen on which an actor smiles at you invitingly. Above it's a little recess, yes. So we've done that. And then um, we are going to look at 180. Suddenly there's a flash and you hear a faint click. Darn it. Damn it. There's a camera hidden in the recess that presumably just saved your image in the security system. Take adventure card 15. Raise the alarm level by one. Damn it. Well, that's actually fine. Because... <laughs> because that's actually fine. Because like, she already has that anyway. <laughs> so basically, that's exactly the same. But that's kind of mean. How you can be punished for doing exploration. But it did tell me I didn't have to look into it, to be fair. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It is what it is. Um, okay, so now we're going to um, do this gas thing. So he's going to combine 29 with 204. 29, 204. You slowly open the valve of the anesthetic gas canister and the gas begins to seep out. It quickly evaporates though, as the canister's not close <gasps> enough to the shaft. If only you could get the gas all the way to the shaft. Before you lose consciousness yourself, you close the valve again. Okay, well here's what I'm going to do. She's going to basically, um, what does she, maybe she's going to go up to here and she's going to try and enter the password. Um, if you know how many, add this to the the number on the adventure card then combine the sum with the location and that did say i think uh oh man so maybe we'll try it anyway um maybe just look at this again uh addiction adventure said please did search it would i be all would be out all day today it's strange i haven't seen betty from accounting from days now hmm i think we know where betty's gone gross uh okay so i'm gonna try the password i don't remember if it told me there's a massive problem with her making a mistake but if there's no um oh it it didn't it told me to return something right but i don't think there was a card and it basically said if, if you if you return it but i think in this case if you want to make an attempt i think one of the cards that i looked at was let's have a look at it again two or one you know what I want to try and do a password because I think, talking about the Lord's Holdings, it's the Lord's Holdings, how many does he see? The lion surveys his Lord's Holdings, how many does he see? Two? Is it worth trying that? I'm not sure. Hmm. I do not know. I think I might just give her a, just a generic, like, explore something. But here's... Oh, actually, he can just exchange... No, she needs not to do that. So, yeah, basically what's going to happen is he's going to tie the plastic tubing with the gas. So, it's basically going to be 1729. 1729. The plastic tubing fits perfectly Bam. over the valve of the canister of anesthetic gas. Return adventure card 17 and 29 to the box and take adventure card 30. Okay, and then he's basically now going to use that. I think that's all I can do. Uh, when he was looking at it, I think it said that he was too far away. And there's nothing else I can do. He can still, yeah, so I think I'm going to just combine them now. So it'd be 30. Well, again, she's going to take a turn where she's just going to kind of have a look at something. Doesn't actually, oh, actually, maybe she can just explore the thing again. 201, yeah. You sit down at the computer and I the keyboard. Take adventure card 90 and read it out loud. That's the one I got rid of. no longer in the game, then read entry 234. 
hopefully I haven't screwed myself over by this, but this is part of the learning experience of the game, so let's just put two, three, four in. An input box flashes up on the screen. Enter password. If you'd like to try guessing the password, read entry 800. I don't think I want to try guessing the password just yet, because I'm still not 100% sure, and I think this is a better thing. So I'm going to now do his turn, and he's going to do 30, 204, 204. If you attach the plastic tubing to the anaesthetic gas canister, you can reach the air vent. You unscrew the valve and direct the gas into the shaft. Return level D to the box. Replace it with level O from the level stack. Ooh. Turn over level O and return all character figures to their previous positions. Caution. If one or more of your team members is on level D when you release the anaesthetic gas, take adventure card 33. <gasps> Place it next to level O, and place the figures of all your passed out team members on Adventure Card 33. Uh, if none of your team members are on level D, return Adventure Card 33 to the box, then read entry O. Ooh. Okay, so Adventure Card 33 is in the box. It's going out of here. Um, hopefully that's good that we didn't trigger that, because I made sense not to guess my own teammates. Um, so now we're going to read out level O, because we have just knocked out the doctor where is he is he's not there there's nothing oh there is something there there's something there yeah he's he's there he's just knocked out you can kind of see him there and the door number has changed so maybe we can actually um the anesthetic gas seems to be working the unconscious surgeon 412 lies next to the operating table something has changed about that door to 415 return adventure cards 24 and 30 to the box 24 and 30 a ventilation plan and that's gone all right sweet so we are making progress which is nice uh okay so now we are gonna go back up so he did that so it's her turn well she's definitely not going to explore that door because it's going to raise the alarm level two and that's going to trigger that so she's going to look at 412 she's probably going to take the id hopefully off the doctor um and see what happens thanks to the anesthetic gas the surgeon lies unconscious next to the operating table amid the remains of the operation disgusting you notice a big bump on his head he seems to have hit his head when he fell he won't be waking up in a hurry you can now take his security id if you want to take it off him take adventure card 31 Ooh, see that before it said if you want to do something then you do it and then something bad happens but we do need his id because i think that that will allow us to get into uh, this spot here so i am going to try and take it so i'm going to take adventure card 31 Yes, okay, so she's got loads of stuff now. I don't think he needs anything, though. Still got the scalpel, but he is actually going to call the elevator. Bing bong. Going to go in here. Going to go up to here, and he's actually going to check this. Now, when we went there before, he was stopped because there was a surgeon. So hopefully there's not going to be any reason why we can't explore this now. So yeah, let's have a look. The surgeon must have deactivated the alarm and opened the door as he fell. There's nothing to be heard but a quiet hiss when you <gasps> open the door. It's gonna be in here. You're met with a wall of silence from the room beyond, together with icy cold. It's only thanks to the light from the operating room that you can even make out shadows in the dark. Nothing but a thermometer glows red in the dark, indicating a temperature of just 35 Fahrenheit. You grope around and manage to flick the light switch. What you see leaves you catching your breath. At least 10 corpses lie in just as many oversized glass drawers. As you reluctantly edge closer to the bodies, you notice something strange. All have a circular mark on their neck, around which the skin is particularly grey. Shuddering, you exit the room and pull the door closed behind you. <laughs> that it was funny because it's like, exit the room. I was like, no, it's exit the game. Because <laughs> of the other Cosmos title. Uh, okay, so gross. Um, however, I do want to write down stuff so temp at 35 degrees that might be important um 10 corpses in glass trays uh at least 10 greater or equal to 10 corpses in glass drawers um and circular mark circular mark uh, on neck with gray around it um okay and that's it so that's it we've checked out that room and that was literally all that was there so that's pretty grim okay so um 
nothing else that was triggered by that but we do have the id now and so she is going to go all the way down to level a and she is going to use the id on the security id on 102 so she's going to have a look in here and hopefully that's not a bad decision so three one one oh two three one one oh two you excitedly insert the security ID into Ooh. the slot below the elevator display, and the doors slide open. You're now able to access the research facility's restricted levels. Cool. Your data glasses flicker briefly, and you hear Ovin's voice again. Your data glasses indicate that you've gained access to the very core of Monochrome Inc. Well done. During your nightly sightseeing tour, our hackers found out that they're running tests in the laboratory. Get access discreetly and find out what's going on there. The laboratory is located on the top floor. In addition, our medical division is very interested in learning more about possible side effects. So please collect any relevant information. And don't forget to leave as few signs of your presence behind as possible. Return Adventure Card 31 to the box. Ooh. Take Adventure Card M2. That's this concludes cute. Chapter 1. Your score is 20 minus one point per active alarm level. Ooh. Please also deduct five points for each major alarm you've triggered in this chapter. You can now either stop playing the game or save it to continue later. When you want to continue playing, then simply read on here. Arrange all Okay, so we made it to the end of chapter one. Uh, wait, I've got uh, chapter F2. Where's F2? Where is F2? F2. E2, E2, E5, E6, E7. Where's F2? There we go. So we need that. So that was Adventure Games um, Monochrome Inc. Chapter 1. Uh, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed it. Okay, so there we go. That's the next thing we unlocked is a new elevator. Um, so I guess that would go here. And we can then access like um, different levels. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed that. I think that was really fun. Um, obviously some mistakes some from being completely random uh, but others i really honestly i think that was really fun i think that i'm definitely invested in the story there's a bit dark what with the dead bodies and stuff but i think that you know it was enough there um i didn't get to do everything in the game like i've still got the usb but i'm assuming because i have all my items um i have access to new areas but i'm still not i'm still able to explore these that maybe some of the things that i can uncover later on will help me to for example unlock the password that is unless it is really as obvious as i thought it was um and also to maybe hack into um that usb flash drive see what it is and get into that safe as well um so yeah i think uh, you know what i i thoroughly enjoyed that that was very good even solo which it's not meant to be a solo game per se well it is but the solo mode is obviously not going to be quite the same um in that you have to sort of come to sort of decisions uh you know together um uh, but you know being able to decide everything for yourself is actually quite nice <laughs> um and look there's still quite a lot of deck of cards to go through so there's still lots of story to uncover and uh yeah i'm really happy with that game i think it was really fun so yeah um i'm gonna save this game uh i'm going to play it on on my own or maybe with some other people depending if they don't mind missing the first chapter but yeah, I think that was really fun. And I uh, hopefully that was useful for you guys as well. And uh, that's it for me for this stream. Um, I will end it here. Um, as I said, any any money, if I do make any money um, from this stream this month, um, we'll be going to the um, charities for um, like Black Lives Matter stuff and uh, helping that. So that would be awesome. Um, bearing in mind, by the way, if you aren't following me and you fancy following me, that's free to do. Just click on the button that's on the top right of the screen actually it's probably just above right at the top of this column um and also if you have twitch or prime um you can if you have amazon prime and twitch account you can combine them you can do a free subscription to you can give one out each month to any channel and that gives me money which ultimately i will be passing on and donating so if you do want to do that go to twitch um twitchprime.com and you can follow the steps there and then you can gift a person a sub a month and that's what would help me to to continue the stream and also donate money to charitable causes as well um so yeah that's it for me thanks for following thanks for watching um please check us out on social media if you fancy um following us further uh, but until the next stream we will take care bye <laughs>